Hello, my name is Ryan. Today we're going to be looking at the KV value for a brushless motor. More specifically, we're going to dive into three simple ways to understand what KV means for us. Starting with what exactly is its definition, then we're going to look at factors that affect the KV, and lastly we're going to talk about the applications. How do we know what KV to select for our application? So let's get started. So the first thing that we can look at is what does KV actually mean? How is it defined? Well, KV is the amount of RPM per volt of a motor. So if we look at a quick example, if we have a motor that delivers 1000 KV, and if we know that we're gonna apply 10 volts to that motor, we can then do the math multiplying the 1000 KV multiplied by 10 volts will give us 10,000 output RPM. So that's what we would expect from the motor. However, the only difference is we have to keep in mind that that is unloaded RPM. It's not under load. It's the unloaded value uh, for this particular application or any of the applications. So let's take a look at factors that affect a brushless motor's KV. So the first one that we'll look at is brushless motor size. So if I compare, I got a bunch of different motors with me right here. If I compare the overall size of each one, I know based on factors that affect the brushless motors that a smaller one will be different than a larger one. If I take the largest motor that I have and compare it to the smallest motor, generally speaking, smaller motors will provide more RPM per volt. Larger motors will have a lower amount of RPM per volt. And there are specific reasons as to why that is. If we're also looking at another factor that affects brushless motor KV, that would also have to do with the amount of magnetic poles within a brushless motor. Now you have magnetic poles and you also have uh, poles that have the copper windings around them. So we're specifically talking about the magnetic poles. However, it does apply to both per se. So if we take two brushless motors, one of them, let's say and assume that this brushless motor here is a two pole and it is of equal size as the motor that I have right here. If this was a two pole motor and this was a full pole, four pole motor, we would have differences in KVs if they're actually the same physical size and especially if they have the exact same number of electrical windings. So if we were to compare these, the motor with higher pole counts is going to have a lower KV value. Opposite to that, the motor that has lower amount of magnetic poles will have a higher KV value. So if we were to compare the other two motors that I have, this one operates very, very different than this motor. So the one here that I have in my left hand has the whole entire case that rotates around the actual windings within this motor. This is another way that KV is affected depending on the brushless motor type. So this that I'm holding is an outrunner brushless motor. An outrunner brushless motor has the entire case rotating around it like you can see here, where the inrunner, I'm holding the outer case and what spins is the rotor inside it. So if I take the shaft and I rotate it, inside this motor it's spinning, the, the actual magnetic rotor. So if we look at the differences there, one of the things that come out of this is outrunners generally have a lower KV value than the inrunner. So there is a video that I did not too long ago explaining more about that that you can check out. So that's another item that does a factor that affects the brushless motor KV. So another factor that does affect KV is the overall brushless motor quality. If you're using better materials within the motor versus using weaker or poorer materials, you're going to get differences in KV. Obviously, better materials inside the brushless motor are going to be advantageous and give you better results, better efficiencies. Better efficiencies may actually reduce your KV of a, of a motor, and there's a specific reason to that as well. Another factor that affects brushless motors is the actual windings within them. Uh, you can also look at windings as the turn count. So back when we were using brushed motors, the ones that have the brushes that wear out and then have to be replaced after a certain amount of time, those motors were more commonly um, stated and sold in terms of their turn count. You would have, for example, a 540 brushed motor class, and that would be broken down into the 
number of turns. For example, like we could talk about a 10 turn, 12 turn. It went all the way up to 27 turns uh, being yours in stock form. And of course it probably went higher than that too. One thing to note, and it was very true within the brushed motor scene as well. As the turns increased, you had the motor KV decreasing. As the turns decreased, when you went from 27 down to let's say 15, 12, 10 in that neighborhood, you had the total amount of KV actually increasing. Depending on your application, you would want a specific motor wind. Another factor that does affect the KV value of a brushless motor is how you terminate the windings. So there's two primary ways that you terminate windings. And of course the motor manufacturer will be the one who's setting this up. There are have been brushless motors where the user was able to terminate the windings. And you do that by attaching wires on the outside of the brushless motor where the terminals were left for you to do so. So one way that you would end up terminating a brushless motor is by what is known as a Y wind. And the other way that you'd be able to terminate the brushless motor is by a delta wind. So your delta wind was known as the more hot wind. That would give you a higher KV value and your Y wind would give you a lower KV value. You'll see in the image beside me exactly what those look like. So that really covers the majority of the list of how the KV changes from one factor to the other and what's actually happening with that value if it's increasing or decreasing. The third item that we want to talk about is how do you select a KV for your specific application? Well, it goes back to our example of being able to calculate uh, the total amount of RPM that you would see from a brushless motor. So if you're looking at a brushless motor for let's say a specific application has to be uh, uh, let's go with a radio controlled airplane. We first need to know what kind of RPM range are we actually trying to tackle. If we know that we're trying to aim for 12,000 RPM unloaded, now we can work down through the math to understand what kind of motor KV we're looking at. The next thing that we need to know, and it's pretty interesting because the first item that you choose is not the motor. You don't choose the motor first. What you should be choosing is the amount of cells that you're going to be using in that application. So if you know that you're going to be using, for example, a four cell setup, that would be 14.8 volts nominal. And you look, you're looking at, uh, let's simplify it. And you're looking at, let's say 12, 14,000 RPM. You take that total RPM and you divide it by your nominal voltage. And then you would get the output, which would be the KV value you're looking for your brushless motor. If we had an application where the airplane was a ducted fan jet and we're looking for 30,000 RPM, maybe 40,000 RPM for this particular jet, we would take that number, divide it how many cells we're gonna run. If it was a six cell lithium polymer battery, we would then know the nominal voltage, six cells times 3.7 volts per cell, gives us 22.2 volt, volts overall. We would take our 30 to 40,000 RPM, we would divide it by the 22.2. That would give us a result of how many KV we're looking for. And of course that KV value is RPM per volt. That's exactly what that represents. So, and it's unloaded of course, that's what we're looking at. So if your application, you know, it's, it's the same every single time you look at a different application. If it's a radio control boat and you are looking at a 25 to 35,000 RPM overall target, that would mean you take those numbers and you divide it by the voltage that you plan to use, whatever that may be. So that's really how KV, how it's defined, the factors that affect it, and then also how you would pick a specific application for it. That really covers this video, understanding what KV value does for us and everything. If you're looking for more of these educational RC videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.